Welcome to Sri Lanka at 99.9 for where we speak cricket every day. My name's Mark Chano and I'm joined as always by Estelle Vazi Devon from the Papare. Um, Estelle, we are absolutely buzzing at the moment because we've been talking about the Women's T20 World Cup. We were going into it kind of suggesting that maybe Sri Lanka might be a little bit undercooked. But turns out, what the hell do we know? Absolutely wrong. Won the opening game against South Africa and then went and beat Bangladesh. How are you feeling about it all? Yeah, it's been a crazy week, hasn't it? And But I will say, I said a good tournament would be beat Bangladesh and cause an upset amongst the other three, which we have already done, which is great. And like, But I don't think anybody saw Sri Lanka having a chance of making it through to the semi-finals, which is like very much a possibility right now, right? Yeah, absolutely. They, they've just, I, I think, and as we all know, my maths isn't the strongest, but I think they've basically just got to beat one off New Zealand or Australia and kind of hope that nobody else exceeds in the, in the run rate, right? I, I don't, like, they can even go through with two wins depending on how the other results go. Right, which is which is crazy. Like when you think about it, coming into the tournament with this being thought of as the tougher group, and I still think that's that's a fair assessment. It does seem like the tougher group. So to come through that, it's it would be it would be crazy if they made it to the semis. So you know how in T Twenty tournaments you often have like the eliminator, I know the qualifier, then the eliminator the final that's basically what they've got themselves into here right because if they've got to get one win in the next two games against australia or new zealand to kind of guarantee themselves to qualify through to the semi-finals um just one positive result gets them over the line right which is i think that's an incredible achievement when you look at the resources that the other sides have and have put into women's cricket over the last few years and you know when me and you started talking and making stuff together a couple of years ago, the question was where the where the women got and here they are. They are doing it for themselves and everyone's absolutely buzzing for it, right? Yeah, but like I think one key thing to remember is this is as is as it is with a lot of success in Sri Lanka cricket, you can't really credit the system. I mean, I don't know how they've They've come through, but they've. You have to give a lot of credit to the players and the commitment they've shown, and you know the hours they've put in. Because, as you saw yesterday, I don't think they were getting paid as much as the other teams as well. So, resources-wise, you know, all round, they've kind of been at a disadvantage. But it's good to see things changing. Yeah, we'll talk about the pay increase uh, at some point during this show as well. But let's talk about, let's mention the the players who have got us to this stage already. We always said that Charmory was the big one, right? If she starts firing and she can find form, then absolutely anything could happen. And that's essentially what's kind of happened in those two games, in the first two games, right? Yeah, absolutely. She was coming in with, like, I think a lot of pressure on her because she hadn't scored uh I think over the last 10 games before the South Africa game, she had one 40 plus score and only two 20 plus scores, including that 40, right? So for a player of her caliber, that just wasn't good enough. And remember last year, Sri Lanka played the Asia Cup where they faced teams like Malaysia, UAE, where you would expect her to get runs. Um, so she's coming in with a lot of pressure. And I think there's always so much pressure on her because it's almost always seen as like, if Chamari doesn't get runs, Sri Lanka not going to do anything. In the first game, she comes in, gets that half century, gets Sri Lanka across the line. Um, sorry, to a competitive total. And then in the second game, it's her bowling that changes things around, right? I mean, at that point, Sri Lanka had given away so many loose deliveries early on that Bangladesh were kind of running away with things and... Like, if you look at the Sri Lankan team still, like that 120, 130 is kind of the limit of their chaseable score. If, particularly if Chamari doesn't get runs, right? So, with 
Bangladesh, I think, getting 42 in that power play, it was looking like they'd be chasing something like 140. But she came in, she got a, uh, got the important breakthroughs, bowled really economically, and of course the other spinners also chipped in. So I think that the last two games, she's really been able to show her value to the Sri Lankan side. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Vishmi um, obviously had a, you know, led the team in South Africa in the under-19 World Cup. And it's kind of hit the ground running as well, right? Definitely going out there a little bit earlier and getting used to those surfaces seems to have helped her quite a lot as well. I love the confidence from her, right? 17 years old. She comes in, she doesn't look like she has a lot of pressure on her. And I, I think, again, credit to coaching staff, the team, probably given her that confidence. She was always going to be, I think, a key part of that batting order because, one, she can score quickly. And two, she's coming in with, with the, after a month of playing in South Africa. Uh, but I loved the confidence from her, whether it's, it was in the field or with the bat. She even was present in some of the press conferences on her own, which is, I mean, she's 17, right? And you can't measure a Sri Lankan or South Af like a South Asian kid with the same kind of tools as you measure, say, an English uh, player who is 19 or 17 or 18, right? So I like, I really like the confidence she showed right, th she's shown right throughout. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it bodes so well for Sri Lanka's future as, right, uh, as well, right? Because, you know, she, in theory, if she could, you know, stay injury-free, she should be around for another kind of 15 years or so, which is absolutely phenomenal. I do wonder, though, is there is there any particular reason why we see so many uh, players in the women's game start so much younger um, and, and and make their debuts in their, in their teens than we do in the men's game? Is do, do we have any answer for, you know, is, is there any answer to that question or is it just just the way it is? Yeah, I, I don't know, like just, I'm only thinking about it now, but like the first thing that came to mind is maybe the structures, like you don't have a strong, uh, like a club structure, then the only way you can pick is to look younger, Yeah. look for younger kids. So maybe that maybe that's one of the reasons. Uh, do you want to have a word on Harsha though as well? Because, you know, do, do you know what? Estelle, right? I was basically going to go through a list of all the players who've done well. But actually, when you think about it, it's it's essentially the whole team, isn't it? There's, you know, obviously, you know, some players have got runs and some players have been, um, you know, at pivotal moments got wickets. But as it stands, they're working incredibly well as a unit, really, aren't they? Uh, which I kind of knew they could do it. I, you know, in, the, in that run to the Asia Cup final, they had they had to do it, especially because they were defending low scores quite often. But it feels just a lot more impressive in this at this moment because I think we, me and you both, kind of thought South African pitches haven't got a huge amount of experience over there. What, what are they going to do? But they kind of like the classic men's teams. They've kind of found a way to get through this, right? Yeah. No, on the pitches, I, I spoke to Kasna Aidu just before the tournament started and she was telling me how because so much cricket has been played uh, during this period in South Africa, the pitches might not be that, you know, we assume it's going to be fast, we assume it's going to be bouncy. It might not always be the case. And that's what we've seen, particularly in Cape Town and Pal, right? So... Like you said, everyone's kind of stood up. If you look at, if you look at the eleven who played, I think barring one or two, everyone's kind of had their moments. The spinners have been fantastic. Uh, almost go unnoticed, I think. Oshadi Rana Singh and Inoka Ranavira in particular almost go unnoticed because they're consistently so good. I think Anushka Sanjeevani has been really good behind the stumps. Um, there was a time where you would see at least a couple of chances go down behind the stumps, but that hasn't been the case. And it's not easy keeping against so much spin, right? She's been good. So there have been everyone kind of standing up uh, in situations where the team has needed them to. Uh, so Estelle, I get to listen to the... Um, I have to listen to the local commentary in the UK... And it's interesting because they obviously rate South Africa. They obviously rated South Africa much higher than they rated Sri Lanka, and even with Bangladesh, they seem to have kind of more information on, on what the 
to expect from the Bangladesh team. Or well, that was my feeling anyway. Um, but, I, I mean, I, I just think it's quite clear that actually there, there is so much talent in that Sri Lanka side. The team have be, actually been together quite a while now. Um, and they're, they're a really good unit. And I wonder if actually... The, you, I can't even normally. I would say that the you know the, the BBC commentators, the British commentators, are kind of underestimating that Sri Lanka side. But actually, I think we're kind of responsible for that as well. We don't realise how professional these girls are. We don't realise how good a thing we've got going over here. Right? We kind of. I I maybe it's just me. Maybe it's I you. need to reassess it's, it's, this. It's just you. I don't think that... <laughs> I think that it's it's about as bad as we... It's not about talent, no, Mark. It's, it's, it's so much more than that, right? And I don't think... Uh, I think one of the reasons why, like, commentators at the BBC may, may kind of give that idea is because they... Cricket South Africa is a lot more accessible to them. They play England often. Uh, you know, when they play other countries, it's on TV or it's on, there are streams that are accessible, that are legal. But for Sri Lanka, it's not the case. Like if you look at even something like the Asia Cup, it wasn't on in the UK, right? Or did you have to give, no, was that the one I, I, that yeah. you had to get like a cooking channel or something? So it's no, not I easily had to, accessible. I had, to, I had to find it on a stream online. Yeah. And I, I think you're right, right? Because, you know, last week when we were previewing it, one of our big frustrations was is that, Essentially, we didn't know who the head coach was. Nobody has ever come out and said, this is the head coach. <laughs> we know Ramesh Ratnaik is there. We know he's looking after the team. We know he's doing a great job. But we only know that because we literally just see him there. right? And the press releases, there is no information about who the staff yeah. is. There's no, um, as, as you say, it, it, it maybe it is just a case of access, right? There's no buzz around yeah. it. I don't think they did any videos on, this, on the Sri Lanka Cricket social media channel. Um mm-hmm. I suppose that kind of gets us to a conversation about about the pay, right? Because they were getting two hundred fifty dollars per game. Mm-hmm. I don't like. I don't feel it's appropriate for me to comment on whether or not I think that's a lot of money. I, I you know, it, it's indifferent because obviously the Sri Lankan economy is 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 what it is. They get a couple of big wins and they've tripled it overnight, right? Um, which, well, which... actually, that press release said that they they decided at the end of January that they would triple the match fee. That's what it said. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but like, I think it's important. It's it's a, it's a good. It's a very good step. I think it's a very good step. Seven hundred fifty USD is a lot of money in Sri Lanka. Uh, but I think what's more important is the contracts. Because 750 per match, how many matches do Sri Lanka play a year is a problem. Um, in the past, I mean, in 2021, we didn't play any. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's an issue, right? Like, contracts are more important, but this is a big step. It's a good step. It's a step in the right direction, definitely. And I, I'm sure it will impact the players' lives, it'll impact people who are maybe considering whether they want to go for go forward with, you know, pursuing a career in cricket. Um, it'll definitely have an impact, but there's still a long way to go. I don't think it's fair to compare it with the Indian amounts because the Indian, uh, I think the women's team's uh, match fees were increased or brought to an equal level as the men. And so they earn much more than the Sri Lankan men do as well. So I don't think it's fair to compare it with the Indian side. But I think there's still a ways to go because I think what you we need to understand is it should not be performance-based until you get to a certain level because you need, I mean, a player who can live and afford everything they need to be a successful cricketer without doing another job is the only way that player is going to be able to do the best that they can, right? So it's not whether they get $1,000 or $2,000 or whatever amount, but is it? does it allow them to, nutrition-wise, training-wise, can they afford everything that they need to be the best player they, they can be? Which it's not there yet. Hopefully it will get there in the next couple of years because I think just looking at 
the money that's been thrown around women's cricket right now with the women's premier league and stuff this is the opportunity that this is the opportunity to realize that there is an audience and there is money in it but you need to invest in it first right yeah absolutely am i right so charmer is the only sri lankan uh, woman with a with a central contract at the moment yeah. i mean uh, l- looking at the way they started this tournament, you'd hope that that changes. And even if it, you know, they just add two or three more extra players every couple of years, I think that would be progress in itself. Should we take a quick break? When we come back, let's look at our chances of getting to the semi-finals, and also let let's have a chat about that WPL auction as well. Welcome back to Sri Lanka 99.94. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you are listening, please do follow us on Twitter. Uh, we have our own Twitter channel now, our own Twitter page, uh, SL on 9994DM. I can see Estelle smiling because because I always get it wrong. Uh, you can follow Estelle as well at Estelle underscore Vazu Day 1 as a number one. Uh, she is the the doyen of Sri Lankan women's cricket. She knows everything about it. She knows everything about the men's game as well. Um, so, yeah, if you, if you want any good insights into Sri Lankan cricket, you need to follow her. If you just want my general chit-chat and my frustrations with Liverpool Football Club, you can follow me as well, at Mark Machado. Uh, we are talking today about Sri Lanka's blistering start to the T20 World Cup in South Africa. Sri Lanka basically just need a win against New Zealand and or Australia to guarantee themselves a spot in the semi-final. Um, this Australian side is arguably the best professional sports team ever put together, Estelle. Is there any hope for us? Um, or or should we just focus our attentions on New Zealand? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a really tough game. I just hope it's very... I mean, for any team in this competition, beating Australia would be an upset, right? So... Sri Lanka beating them would be, I don't know, probably the biggest upset in in women's cricket ever. Uh, But I think they should approach it as they would any other game. Chamari Adapatu, in fact, mentioned, I think this was after the win against South Africa, that no one's looking at them. You know, everyone thinks that Sri Lanka doesn't have that much to offer, but already they've been proven wrong, right? So just take it as as you would any other game. Um, and understand that that result doesn't matter. Win or lose, or, well, a loss does not matter. A win would be massive, but a loss doesn't matter. So even if they do go down against Australia, they they have another opportunity against New Zealand, just kind of base their strategies on what they would do for any other game. And they're playing New Zealand and Paul, right, which is the pitch that plays most like a... South Asian pit. It should work into our hands, right? And uh, should give the girls confidence, especially because New Zealand aren't coming into it in great form. Yeah, I think the the conditions definitely should play into Sri Lanka's hands. But again, I think they have to be a bit cautious because New Zealand's going to be, I mean, New Zealand's not going to want to go out without a fight, right? They've, they've been super, like they've been superbly disappointing, I think, during the last two games. The two big games for them in the competition, they've been really poor. And just watching Sophie Devine's press conferences, you can see that, that the hurt there, right? And players of that caliber, you can't keep them down for long. So they're going to come out, I think, firing against us. They're going to play Bangladesh before us. So maybe they'll have a win under their belts. Either way, whether they have a win or not, I think they're going to come out all guns blazing. Looks like their chances of making it through to the semis are all but done. So 
they'll want to go out on a high. So Sri Lanka will want to be cautious about that. They have never beaten New Zealand before. So I think it's good to kind of temper our expectations also. They've never beaten New Zealand before. Uh, even when Sri Lanka's had better teams on the park, they've they've had a tough time against New Zealand. So it's good to kind of keep our expectations in check while also knowing that if you if Sri Lanka have a game like they did against South Africa, and I think batting first will be key, um, they could they could cause another upset in that game. Um, let's talk about the WPL auction. We went into it. I went into it going thinking a very good day for Sri Lanka would be to get three players in to to sides. I was obviously I knew that there wasn't as many places open to international players as I think many of us were hoping for, just because there's only five sides. Uh, we came out of it with no players involved in, in the WPL for the first season, at least to begin with. Um, is this a disaster for Sri Lankan women's cricket? Or actually, do you think that it might have given the powers that be, the people at SLC and, and the sports ministry and beyond? Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously it's disappointing as Sri Lankans watching that and seeing players like Chapari Adapattu not pay. I don't know whether it was on this pod or where, or whether it's just in my head, but I remember thinking that it might not be such a big surprise to a lot of people if she doesn't get picked just based on form. And if you look at if you look at some of the teams in the WPL, how they were looking at getting a lot of younger players. Um, so it's not a, I don't know if it's a, you can call it a massive shock, but it is really disappointing. And I think uh, I mentioned to you before the show, uh, some information that I got regarding the fact that she may have had may have had like assurance that somebody would bid for her. So that makes it even more kind of, uh, you know, heartbreaking from her point of view, right? Uh, but I do think, I mean, if you look at, if you look at the kind of restrictions the uh, WPL have, like six overseas players per squad, uh, and you've got so many players in that mix, I think more than 100 went into the, the auction, more, more than 100 overseas players and of that only 30 could be picked right so in the grand scheme of things you it's unrealistic to expect multiple Sri Lankans to get in but it's it's eye-opening in the fact that for SLC as well um, like we saw we've seen in the men's team that they need to kind of move with the times and get kind of the systems in place if they want players to go on to play in these competitions. And I think particularly for the women, it would be massive to go into a franchise tournament and play. Chamari Adapattu has played all around the world and I'm sure there's a lot she's gained through that. Um, I think Shashikala Sirivadhan has played in the previous IPL like exhibition tournaments and Udeshika Prabodhini played in the fair break tournament. So those are the only players who've had that exposure, right? So it would be massive for some of the younger players to get opportunities like that. So maybe it's time again, maybe it's past time, but, you know, the best time to start is now, right? Get going with something that can get these players to the next level so that they will have more opportunities, you know, to pursue uh, in the world of cricket. I think they need to just press on with plans for the women's LPL and you know, have have a very good T20 domestic tournament in SL. That's, I, I think you want to do it just before the, the, the Women's Premier League as a kind of warm up into the tournament, as it were. And I think, you know, for SLC, it's a potential huge revenue stream if they can get it right. Um, I don't know what the, you know, what the situation is with, with terms of, you know, people who produce the LPL, whether they have the first dibs on the women's equivalent or whether they can use different people, who knows? But I think that's got to be what the conversation that, that's that been having, that they've got to start having that in, in, within Sri Lanka cricket at the moment. Um, Estelle, let's leave it over there. Um, obviously, we'll be back to kind of review the whole tournament um, as and when uh, Sri Lanka progress or don't progress through the group stages. Um, obviously, I think everyone involved in 99.94 wishes the Sri Lankan 
uh, women's team as much luck as they need to get through to the next hurdle and beyond. Uh, we'll be back in the next few days with more content um, in and around Shlunkin cricket. There's always lots to discuss. Uh, so we'll be back shortly. Thanks for joining us. Bye.